10 ke 30 uh, I can't do remember but it is one of one of the richest people pe- uh, persons in the world so and then so bila dikata Jeff's e store ni ya yeah, e store electronic store they they are talking about they are talking about Amazon uh, the online store Amazon Through this summary, you can conclude that A. Jeff Bezos enjoys reading books, B. Jeff Bezos is careful about what he sells, C. Jeff Bezos is against drinking and smoking, and D. There are many similarities between Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos. Ada idea tak kelas? Yang mana satu? Okay, uh, first kali kita study question dulu ya. Through this summary, you can conclude that ya, daripada rumusan di atas ini, kamu boleh rumuskan bahawa okey jadi dia minta rumusan untuk rumusan ini ya that means jawapan ni ialah dia minta jawapan yang betul berdasarkan petikan itu maksud soalan ni ya ha, apakah jawapan yang betul berdasarkan petikan right jadi a jeff bezos enjoys reading books yes or no Ada tak dia mention tentang uh, Bezos no. and books? No, ya? Yeah? No, dia tak sebut langsung tentang Bezos and books. So, A is wrong. B, Jeff Bezos is careful about what he sells. Yes or no? Any ideas, class? Jeff Bezos is careful about what he sells. He doesn't say anything about it. No? Okay. C. Jeff Bezos is against drinking and smoking. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Why? On the last um, sentence, is, uh, it states that you still can't buy alcohol or tobacco on Jeff's e-store. Okay. Uh, cuba baca the sentence before that. As the owner of this online platform, Jeff also believes that he should be watchful about the things you can buy from him. Yeah, pay attention kepada the line, watchful about things you can buy from him. Yeah. Sebab, di, uh, why do you think? Kenapa rasanya tak boleh beli? alcohol ataupun tobacco on Amazon ada tak? ada idea tak? why you cannot buy alcohol or tobacco kalau kita pergi kedai yang biasa-biasa pun kan bukannya senang-senang eh kamu boleh beli alcohol ataupun tobacco kalau nak beli barang-barangan tobacco Ya, beli barang-barang atas bakau macam rokok kan ha, kena ada, kena sekurang-kurangnya 18 tahun dan ke atas kan? sekurang-kurangnya 18 tahun kalau nampak muda sangat, dia akan minta IC kalau nak beli alkohol kalau Melayu saja, confirm tak boleh beli dah and then, kalau kamu bukan Melayu tetapi nampak macam umur bawah 18 tahun dia akan minta IC itu dekat Malaysia. Jadi bayangkan kalau kamu ada online store yang berjual kepada seluruh dunia, ya, undang-undang dia akan lain-lain tau. Undang-undang dia akan lain-lain macam dekat US, uh, apa undang-undang untuk membeli alkohol dan barang-barang tembakau 21 tahun dan ke atas. Ha, kalau macam dekat Malaysia 18 tahun dan ke atas. Ha, macam dekat Jepun 16 tahun dan ke atas. So Dia bukannya, so that's why I'm saying that B, uh, I'm saying that C is wrong. Dia bukannya, he himself is not personally against drinking or smoking. Yeah? Uh, he is not personally against drinking or smoking. But, dia tak mahu dia punya company dia masuk apa, uh, kena saman ke apa ke kan. And so, dia tak menjual barang-barangan alkohol ataupun tembakau. 
Jadi the actual answer is B because he is watchful about the things you can buy from him. Ya kalau kamu tengok ayat things you can buy from him dengan what he sells sebenarnya dua ayat itu bermaksud sama. Ayat pertama kata barang yang kamu boleh beli daripada dia dan kedua ialah barang yang dia jual. Ada beza tak antara dua barang ni? Antara dua sentence ni. Okay, tiada beza ya. Yeah. There is no difference antara benda yang kamu boleh beli daripada Amazon dan barang yang Amazon jual. So, uh, ini ialah a, a small trick. Ya, yeah, ini ialah a small trick yang yang uh, penulis ini gunakan ya, yeah, ini sebenarnya di, di cuma ubah ayat itu tetapi maksud ayat itu sama. Ya. Yeah. Things you can buy from him dan what he sells those two things are the same jadi the answer here is b ya yeah, the answer here is b all right okay Essay writing, uh, the next question ya. Yeah. Ada, kalau ada question, uh, tolong tolong angkat tangan ya. Yeah. Kalau ada question, tolong angkat tangan. Okay, next question. Essay writing checklist from Miss, from Miss R. First draft is a good start but every first draft can be taken to the next level. Use this checklist to help you plan your next steps. Okay, dia ada tiga, content, evidence and support and then language. Content is king. Ensure your content accurately answers the question given to you. In addition, your essay should be convincing, logical and interesting. Your, your essay should include many quality examples to support your angle. You can add suitable supporting evidence from reputable news articles, websites and library books. Double check for any spelling errors, grammatical errors and misused words. Vary your sentence length to create a natural, pleasant flow for your essay. Okay, according to Miss R's writing checklist, the main goal of this checklist is to set a clear writing goal, write a good quality first draft, improve your next draft or score well on essay questions. Alright, so, dia punya, uh, this kind of question, yeah, this kind of question, You have to pay attention kepada soalan dia. Cuba tengok dia tanya, according to the checklist, the main goal of this checklist. Ya, yeah, the main goal of this checklist. That means benda yang dekat dalam kotak bawah ni, content, evidence and support and language, those are actually dia orang cuma tambahan sahaja. Uh, if you if you apa, if you spend too much time baca benda ini tetapi Uh, kalau kamu baca benda ni sampai kamu lupa bahagian atas ini maka kamu akan salah jawab soalan ni because the the the, the question asks for the main goal of the checklist right so kita tengok dia punya bahagian atas dia, dia kata first draft is a good first is a good start but every first draft can be taken to the next level dia kata dekat sini every first draft can be taken to the next level. So the question here is apa maksudnya taken to the next level? Yeah, the question is apa maksudnya taken to the next level? A. Set a clear writing goal. B. Write a good quality first draft. C, improve your next draft and D, score well on essay questions. Kita tengok, kita cek satu satu ya. Uh, A, set a clear writing goal. Betul ke salah? Set a clear writing goal. Betul ke salah? Class.
the clue here is here ya dia punya clue untuk soalan ni ada dekat sini sahaja yang bawah ni tak ada kaitan langsung right no ya yeah? uh, this is not about uh, writing goals ya yeah? it is not about writing goals tak ada kaitan pun dengan writing goals ya yeah? B write a good quality first draft and C improve your next draft. Okey jadi the, the the beza antara B dengan C ialah B is talking about the first draft, C is talking about the next draft. So antara B dengan C mana betul? D salah ya. D sebab ini ialah dia cerita tentang drafting. But is this talking about the first draft or is it talking about the next draft? Sebab ada perkataan next steps ni ya? Alia? Yeah. Kan? Sebab ada perkataan next steps ini maka you think the answer is C. Tetapi, dia ada ayat kat sini, every first draft can be taken to the next level. Ah, Dekat sini dia guna lagi perkataan next itu, tetapi dia kata taken to the next level. That's why kita ada keliru dekat sini, mungkin B ini betul. Jadi, jawapan dia ialah C. Ya, jawapan dia ialah C. Dan, the answer is C because, kalau kita tengok B, dia kata write a good quality first draft. Yeah, write a good quality first draft. Dia kata good quality. The word good here. Sedangkan C dia kata improve. Yeah, uh, there is a very very uh, small but clear difference yeah, antara good dengan improve. Good ini ialah dia, dia dah bagus. Improve ini dia belum bagus, dia menjadi bagus ataupun dia dah bagus menjadi lebih bagus. Uh, that is why the answer is C sebab line yang ini every first draft can be taken to the next level is talking about improvement yeah uh, and then of course lah the next uh, the next line kata plan your next step so what happens after the first draft so it is talking about improvement and it is talking about what happens after the first draft yeah harus tu boleh faham ya Uh, soalan kalau kamu jumpa soalan ni mungkin kamu kena ambil masa sikit baca dia punya soalan ulang-ulang kali ya baca dia punya uh, choice of words ya pilihan-pilihan perkataan dekat dalam jawapan tu berulang-ulang kali okay. untuk soalan-soalan macam ni soalan-soalan yang mengilirukan macam ini is okay to take your time ya yeah, jangan rasa macam rushing alright next number 3 Singapore, you might not have heard of Tan Hui Ling and Anthony Tan, but you ha you most probably have heard of their ride hailing service. Before Hui Ling is a mechanical engineer and Anthony has family roots in the car industry. In in 2011, the two professionals crossed paths in a business school in the US. They noticed how successful ride hailing service companies are in the US. Then they came up with the idea of starting a similar business in Southeast Asia. In June 2012, their ride hailing service company was born. Uh, what is the meaning of ride hailing? How was it ride hailing? Hail, hail. Yeah, ride hailing. Ride ni maksudnya tahulah kan? Ride ni maksudnya Uh, menunggang kan, menunggang ataupun menaiki tetapi hailing apa maksud hailing ride hailing yeah. jadi hail ini H-A-I-L maksudnya memanggil yeah, memanggil jadi ride hailing service ialah satu service yang di mana kita memanggil untuk untuk uh, ada kenderaan datang ambil kita lah 
Jadi uh, ada idea tak siapa dia Tan Hui Ling dengan Anthony Tan ni? Siapa dia orang ni? Ada idea tak? Pernah dengar tak? Ya, uh, macam tadi Steve Jobs dengan Jeff Bezos kita dengar, pernah dengar kan? Uh, jadi siapa dua orang ni? Tan Hui Ling dan Anthony Tan. Jadi dia orang dua ni ialah founder of the company Grab. Tahu tak? Kam- tahu tak Grab? Pakai tak Grab? Kan? Uh, ya. Yeah. Ha? Uh, grab, grab food, grab ride apa semua tu kan ha, Jadi ha, dua orang ni lah dia punya founder dia Ya. Ha. Asalnya daripada Singapore I think Tak salah lah Okay Alright and then uh, 2012 They started their ride hailing service company Grab lah ya From the newspaper extract above You can conclude that Tan Hui Ling and Anthony Tan A did not know each other before 2011. B. Completed their business degree in the US. C. Are experienced in the automobile industry. And D. Have always wanted to start their own ride hailing service. Okay. A. Betul ke salah? Did not know each other before 2011. Sebelum 2011, dia orang tak kenal satu sama lain. Jadi dekat atas ni dia tulis, In 2011, the two professionals crossed paths in a business school in the US. Apa maksudnya crossed paths? They met. To, uh, to cross paths bermaksud They met, ya. Yeah. Mereka berjumpa. Jadi A mungkin betul, ya. Yeah. Mungkin mereka tidak mengenali satu sama lain sebelum tahun 2011. Sebab dia tulis kat sini mereka berjumpa pada tahun 2011. Tapi kita cek yang lain dulu. B completed their business degree in the US. Mereka melengkapkan, mereka habis dia orang punya business degree dekat US. Betul ke salah? No. No, ya. Yeah, tak ada. Dia tak sebut tentang business degree. Dia cuma kata business school. C. Experienced in the automobile industry. Yes or no? Hui Ling is a mechanical engineer. Anthony has family roots in the car industry. So it's a no. It's a no, yeah, no. Sebab mechanical engineer tak semestinya bekerja dengan automobile industry. Ya, yeah, tak semestinya. Mechanical engineer ni besar. D have always wanted to start their own ride hailing service. Have always. Sebab ada perkataan have always ini maka dia salah. Ya, mereka cuma apabila mereka berjumpa tahun 2011 dekat US orang perasan bahawa uh, ride hailing service ini sangat-sangat berjaya di US. Uh, kalau kat US apa nama company dia? Uber. Uber ya. Kalau dekat US dia punya company dia ialah Uber. Uh, uh, kalau kamu ingat dulu once upon a time Malaysia pun ada Uber juga tetapi uh, mereka kurang berjaya ya sebab Grab lebih lebih famous. Uh, kemudian Grab pun beli Uber Malaysia. Okay, so the answer here is A. They did not know each other before 2011. And the proof is crossed paths. Ya, yeah, uh, mereka berjumpa tahun 2011. Jadi apabila kamu jawab soalan macam ini, penting untuk kamu memastikan bahawa kamu betul. Macam mana nak akan pastikan kamu betul? Ada bukti lah. Ya, ada bukti. Okay. Organizing your life with Mary Kondo. If it doesn't spark joy, it doesn't belong in your room. That's what Mary Kondo, the internationally famous organizing expert, advises. She is known for helping you identify what doesn't belong at home. Recently, she has turned to advising others on what they should buy too. We should buy things that spark joy, Marie said. 
read these 10 tips from Marie and create the practical shopping list which, which sparks joy. Uh, Marie Kondo pun uh, a very uh, real person ya. Marie Kondo pun a very real person. Uh, cikgu tak minat sangat dengan dia punya prinsipal dia. Sebab kalau kita ikut prinsipal dia, oh banyak benda kita buat. <laughs> sangat banyak benda kita buat. Tetapi uh, kalau kamu berminat dengan apa, nak, uh, nak menyusun ya. Uh, cubalah tengok dia punya video-video dia. Very interesting. Jadi dia ada dia punya prinsipal dia. If it doesn't spark joy, it doesn't belong in your room. Ya, dia kena, benda tu kena membawa joy, keseronokan. Uh, bar, uh, baru kamu simpan. Kalau tak, buang. So, following the 10 tips by Marie Kondos will most likely A, bring joy to your home, B, improve your purchase decisions, C, help you tidy and organize your home, or D, identify what you should keep and what you should throw away. Okay, yang ini, cikgu nak student cuba jawab sendiri. Cuba jawab. Ada jawapan tak? What is your answer? D. Why D? Because um, there's a line that says she is known for helping you identify what doesn't belong at home. Okay. Uh, ada orang lain dengan jawapan lain? Ada tak? Any other student nak try? Jawab macam mana kalau salah, salah lah. Huh? I think the answer is C. Why C? Because she's known for helping you identify what doesn't belong at home. Okay. So it also help you to tidy and organize your home at the same time. Alright. Now, uh, can I say name? Nitis. Nitis, yeah, Nitis. Yes. Uh, Nitis, can you please read for me the final line, the final sentence, rather? Read these ten tips from Mary and create a partition shop list. Shopping this which part story. Okay. The 10 tips is about apa? What is the what are the 10 tips about? Organizing our room. Nope. Baca lagi sekali. Eh, cikgu cikgu sebut uh, so slow ya. Yeah? Read these 10 tips from Marie and create a practical shopping list which sparks joy. So, cikgu tanya lagi sekali. What are the 10 tips about? The 10 tips are about creating a practical shopping list. Dia punya jawapan dia sebenarnya is in this line only. Jawapan dia hanya ada dekat barisan terakhir itu sahaja. Yang lain tu semua tu satu sampai ke sini this whole thing design dia untuk mengelirukan pelajar dan dia berjaya mengelirukan pelajar. Sebenarnya jawapan dia ialah antara A, B, C dengan D yang mana berkaitan dengan practical shopping lists. Shopping, shopping. When you sh shopping, kamu hmm. membeli, betul tak? Shopping ialah membeli. Antara A, B, C dengan D yang mana berkaitan dengan pembelian? The answer is B. Because there's a keyword called purchase. Yes. 
the keyword here is purchase so nampak tak macam mana penulis-penulis uh, soalan akan cuba untuk mengelirukan kamu <laughs> kalau kamu join kelas cikgu daripada uh, daripada mula kelas online ni generate dulu kamu akan ingat bahawa cikgu pesan kan uh, bila kamu dah level SPM dia punya soalan-soalan dia macam ini that's why read very very carefully take your time fahami soalan nak apa fahami petikan nak apa dan fahami jawapan nak apa ya yeah? so the answer for number 4 is b improving your purchase decisions sebab the proof here is practical shopping list the 10 tips here bukannya tentang organizing title kata organizing punyalah banyak sebut tentang organizing tetapi the real answer hanya ada di sentence terakhir sahaja so be very very careful ya yeah? be very very careful tak apa nanti bila kamu dah ada kertas depan mata kejap lagi ha dia akan jauh lebih senang untuk kamu careful right now kamu duduk depan screen kan and then dah malam lagi so uh, so don't worry about it too much tetapi uh, just pay in mind bahawa you need to be careful apabila kamu membaca soalan-soalan macam ni ya yeah? alright any questions class ada ada masalah tak ada ada nak complain ke <laughs> Kelas 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 SPM cikgu ada ada student complain kenapa dia buat macam tu ada juga student complain kan ha, jadi cikgu tanya awal awal lah ada ke student yang nak complain <laughs> ha, memang macam tu ya dia memang macam tu nak buat macam mana alright February 2019 ya yeah, question number five ya yeah. this is a stage in life which every professional athlete must go through and the same goes for Nicole David. Nicole David, the eight-time world squash champion, is ready to bid farewell from the international stage. She will be hanging up her racket in June 2019. Soon, she will no longer be competing in the limelight, but she is still a trailblazer. Nicole plans to attend various high-profile conferences to promote squash and women's presence in sports. Okay, uh, dalam, dalam petikan ini, ada banyak contoh-contoh frasa ya, phrases that I want students to learn. Okay, first of all, hanging up. Ya, apa ma apa maksudnya ayat ni? Hanging up her racket. Resign? Yeah, retire ya, yeah, to retire. Dia bukan resign, dia retire. Sebab kalau resign, uh, be careful ya, resign maksudnya dia berhenti. Tetapi, dia boleh nak sambung balik kan macam macam kerja betul tak kan kamu berhenti ke satu tempat kamu bekerja ke tempat lain itu maksud resign tapi eh, dalam ini maksudnya ialah retire ya dia bersara hang up her racket maksudnya retire ya bersara pay attention ya sebab nanti kalau kamu jumpa ayat-ayat macam ni nanti ha cikgu tak mau kamu keliru and then in the limelight apa maksudnya in the limelight Nah, cikgu tulis kat sini actually uh, Bersara Ya yeah. Alah kecilnya Okay Ini maksudnya bersara ya yeah. Hanging up her Racket And then In the limelight Apa maksudnya in the limelight Ya, kalau kalau kamu tak tahu limelight ni benda apa, uh, sekejap cikgu nak. Okay. <coughs> limelight ni ialah sejenis uh, cahaya yang uh, sekarang ni dah tak pakai dah. Tetapi uh, zaman dulu kan, uh, dia orang dapat cahaya dengan bakar apa uh, kabai. Ya? Uh, dia orang bakar kabai, lepas tu tak, tak tahulah kamu pernah jumpa ke tidak apa nama itu, uh, lilin kabai kan, ha, itu maksudnya in the limelight, tetapi frasa in the limelight ini maksudnya apa what is the meaning of in the limelight
Maksudnya Publicly ya, Publicly ataupun In public Itu maksudnya ya In the limelight ini maksudnya Publicly ataupun In public ya, In the limelight ini maksudnya Publicly ataupun In in public Maksudnya uh, no longer competing In public lah Ya yeah, betul di pusat perhatian Ya, uh, maksudnya kalau dia main squash lepas ni pun dia main dia main bukan bukan depan kamera, bukan depan orang ramai lah. Right? And then lagi satu perkataan trailblazer. Apa maksud trailblazer? Nah, trailblazer ni kamu boleh Google lah apa maksud dia sebab dia perkataan ya. Apa maksud dia? Trailblazer. Itu pun perkataan yang kita jarang jumpa. Jumpa tak? Apa Google kata tentang trailblazer? Google kata <coughs> trailblazer is a person who is the first to do something or an innovator. Ya, yeah, betul ya. Yeah? Ya, yeah, trailblazer ni ialah orang yang uh, orang yang pertama ataupun antara orang yang pertama untuk melakukan sesuatu. Jadi dekat dalam contoh ini uh, dia uh, Nicole David ialah antara apa atlet wanita yang uh, yang awal lah untuk main squash secara profesional. Alright, the question. Is which title best fits this news article? Ah, uh, dia minta tajuk. A. Nicole David plans for retirement. B. Life after retirement. C. Nicole David announces her retirement. Or D. Nicole David debuts at high-profile conferences. Jom kita baca satu-satu. A. Nicole David plans for retirement. Yes or no? Betul tak salah? No, because she already retired. No. Already retired? Mana bukti dia? Where do you read that? She will be hanging up her racket. Yeah, she will be. Itu bukan future tense ke? Tapi dia dah kata Nicole plans to attend various high profile. Okay. Dia punya, the, the answer to to that particular problem is this one. Is ready to. Is ready to. Dia bersedia untuk. Tetapi adakah itu bermaksud dia sudah buat? No. No. Ya? Belum. Jadi, A, mungkin. Jom kita cek yang lain dulu. B. Life after retirement. Nicole David. Yes or no? No. No. No ya. Yeah? Dia tak sebut tentang life after retirement. Dia kan ini cuma plans sahaja. Yeah? Sama juga soon ya. Yeah? Soon. And then Nicole plans to. Ha, semua ini menunjukkan bahawa the retirement belum terjadi. C. Nicole David announces her retirement. Yes or no? No. no. No juga. No ya. Yeah? Tak ada announcement dekat dalam artikel ini. And then D. Nicole David debuts at high profile conferences. Debut apa maksud debut kelas? Ya, tu cara sebut dia ya. Yeah, debut. Bukan bukan debuts. <laughs> yeah? The debut. Apa maksud debut? A first time. Yes. To, uh, to be introduced to something or to do something for the first time. Uh, jadi dikatakan dekat sini Nicole David is introducing herself to prof high profile conferences. Jadi cerita pasal ni lah ya uh, to promote squash and women's presence in sports ya yeah, high profile conferences. So D betul ke salah? The key here is the word debuts. So D yes or no? No. 
No. Kenapa no? Why no? Tak faham ayat apa? Tak faham ayat D tu ya? The 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 answer D tak faham. Because Nicole plans to attend various high Yes, yeah, okay. So D, dia kata Nicole David debuts at high profile conferences. Maksudnya ialah Nicole David memperkenalkan diri dia kepada uh, apa conferences yang high profile, yang famous lah kan. Jadi maksudnya uh, dia nak kata dekat situ Nicole David dia mula join high profile conferences. Tetapi debuts ini dalam present tense. Maksudnya D kata Nicole David dah bermula. Tetapi ayat kata Nicole plans to. So D is wrong. Sebab Nicole David belum lagi join high profile conferences. At least according to this article. Faham tak? Faham. Faham ya? Alright. So the answer here is A. And the answer here is A. Okay. Jadi kalau ada student yang sekarang ni tengah duk risau, Allah kata susahnya soalan-soalan SPM ni kan? Tak apa, don't worry. That's why kita buat exercises macam ni. Yeah, that's why kita ambil masa 40 minit untuk cerita pasal 6 soalan je. <laughs> kan? Perasan tak? Dah 60 minit. Sedangkan kita baru nak masuk soalan nombor 6. Yeah? Ha, the reason is because Cikgu ajar kamu macam mana nak jawab soalan macam ni and then dekat dalam SPM nanti ha, kamu boleh menjawab dengan jauh lebih cepat ya. Yeah? So don't worry. Alright. Dear editor, some legislators hope to lower the voting age from 21 to 18. Personally, I don't think age really matters. I've met many mature youths and irresponsible adults in my life. The more important question is this. Are youths educated on the rights and responsibilities of being a citizen? How many secondary schools and universities teach a class on our constitution? Without proper awareness, can we expect a citizen 18 or 81 to vote responsibly by a concerned citizen? Okay. Jadi penulis dia ialah a concerned citizen. Seorang so, warga negara yang kerisauan. Ya? Okay, what is the writer concerned about? Uh, penulis ni dia risau tentang apa? A. The lowering of the voting age from 21 to 18. Yes or no? Adakah dia risau tentang the lowering of the voting age? Maybe. Okay. B. Lack of awareness of rights of citizens. C. Immature youths and irresponsible adults. D. Education in secondary schools and universities. Kalau kamu perasan A, B, C dengan D, semua ada dekat dalam ni. Ya? Yeah? Ha, jadi, you have to, ha, nak kena fikir jauh sikit lah ya. Yeah? Okay, first of all, the lowering of the voting age from 21 to 18. A ini salah because... Dia kata dekat sini, personally, I don't think age really matters. Dia kata umur itu, dia uh, personally tidak penting. Right? So, personally, I don't think age really matters. So, A, salah. B, lack of awareness of rights of citizen. Perasan tak dekat sini, dia kata the more important question. Maksudnya, dia mementingkan apa yang dia akan cakap selepas ini dan dia lebih mementingkan are youths educated on the rights and and responsibilities of being a citizen jadi kalau kamu nak cari dia punya main point dia ini dia punya main point dia macam mana cikgu tahu because of the word the more important question so this is the answer. 
youth are youth educated on the rights and responsibilities of being a citizen the next part ini semua cerita uh, dia expand tentang soalan ini ya yeah? how many secondary schools and universities teach a class on our constitution cerita tentang soalan yang pertama ini without proper awareness how can we expect a citizen to vote responsibility uh, responsibly pun juga menerangkan tentang soalan yang pertama ini dia punya main point dia ialah are youths educated on the rights and responsibilities of being a citizen macam mana kita tahu sebab ada the more important question ada frasa ini and so the answer is b and the answer is b panda Faham cikgu? Ya, yeah, kalau kalau tidak faham, tolong angkat tangan ya. Yeah. Kalau tak faham, tolong angkat tangan. Kalau tak ada orang angkat tangan, cikgu akan anggap kamu faham ataupun kamu kamu tak mahu faham and then cikgu akan sambung ke soalan seterusnya. Alright, next. When things get tough, my mind often turns to the former Prime Minister of the UK, Winston Churchill. I admit, I am terrified of failure. I don't want to disappoint my friends and family. However, I know it is impossible to succeed at everything. That's when I remind myself with his famous quote, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Okay, jadi uh, penulis ini kata dia terrified of failure. Yeah? Pay attention kepada this line terrified of failure ya yeah, dia sangat sangat takut dengan kegagalan kenapa because they don't want to disappoint friends and family okey jadi kita dah identify dia punya main point dia the writer is most likely having a hard time okey apa yang dia susah untuk buat apa yang dia menghadapi kesusahan A. Overcoming the fear of failure B. Becoming a respectable leader C. Believing in himself or herself or D. Finding the strength to succeed Apa masalah utama penulis ini? A, B, C or D? Ideas class? A. C Okay, ada yang jawab A, ada yang jawab E. Yang, ja yang jawab A, kenapa A? What is your proof? Uh, because it says I am, I am terrified of failure. Okay, yang jawab C, kenapa C? Because that once I remind myself with this famous quote, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Alright. Uh, cikgu nak tarik perhatian kepada this part of the question. Having a hard Time. Ya sebab tu cikgu translate tadi kan dia menghadapi kesusahan. Ya dia menghadapi kesusahan untuk lakukan apa yang seterusnya. Ya, untuk lakukan sesuatu. Ya the writer is most likely having a hard time blank. Ya penulis itu kemungkinan besar menghadapi kesusahan untuk A B C atau D. Ya jadi The answer here is A, overcoming the fear of failure. Ya, kenapa A? Sebab uh, macam kawan kamu sebut tadilah, I am terrified of failure. Ya, dia sangat-sangat takut dengan kegagalan. Ya, dia dia bukannya susah untuk believing in herself or herself. In fact, believing in themselves tak tulis pun dekat sini. Tak disebut pun tentang believing in themselves tetapi dia ada sebut tentang terrified of failure and so the answer is A ya yeah? alright and then number 8 this is a message brought to you by the Jane Goodall Institute if we can help farmers rely less on slashing and burning forests We are not just protecting the forests, but the chimpanzees that live there too. Yeah. Jadi, Dr. Jane Goodall kata, I realized if we don't have 
if we don't help people to have better lives, we can't even try to save the chimpanzee. Yeah, we need to educate the local farmers about the effect of, of the effects of slash and burn. Train farmers to adopt farming technologies that don't involve burning forests. Governments should stop the fires early and stricter law enforcement. Yeah, uh, the message ini dibawa oleh uh, Jane Goodall Institute, a doctor. Yeah? And then the poster is mainly about, uh, dia, uh, ada perkataan mainly dekat situ. A. Promoting the Jane Goodall Institute. B. Laws related to farmers and farming. C. Promoting solutions to limit slash and burn. Or D. Jane Goodall's observations on slash and burn. Any ideas, class? Mainly. Yeah, jadi sebab dia, dia, sebab dia ada perkataan mainly, maka kita tengok dia paling banyak sebut tentang apa. Ya, ini satu part, ini satu part, ini satu part, satu part, satu part dan satu part. Ya, there are a lot of parts kan. Ha. Jadi paling banyak dia sebut tentang apa? A, B, C, O, D. Any ideas? Kita tengok, nak, nak, nak tengok salah satu ya, kita tengok salah satu. A, promoting the Jane Goodall Institute, yes or no? No. No ya, yeah? no. Sebab dia cuma sebut institute itu dekat atas ni saja. B, laws related to farmers and farming. Yes or no? Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Kenapa maybe? Because dalam kat atas tu banyak farm, farmer and uh, tu. Okay. Uh, B, dia punya fokus dia bukannya farmers and farming ya. Dia punya fokus dia ialah laws. Undang-undang. Undang-undang apa? Undang-undang yang berkaitan dengan farmers and farming. Uh, ah yeah. ya, the, the main subject of answer B is laws, undang-undang. Kalau kamu perasan antara banyak-banyak ni yang sebut pasal laws cuma ini sahaja. Cuma yang bawah ni sahaja. Jadi B pun sebenarnya salah. C promoting solutions to limit slash and burn. Yes or no? Ada banyak tak solution Ten untuk uh, apa untuk menghadkan to limit slash and burn? Yes. Ya, yeah, kalau kamu perasan one ya yeah, uh, yang ini, yang ini, yang ini and yang ini semuanya tentang solutions to limit slash and burn. Ya, yeah, macam mana kita nak mengelakkan daripada menggunakan slash and burn. Jadi a uh, Slash and burn ni ialah apabila uh, mereka memotong dan membakar sebahagian daripada satu huta, kuasa hutan ni supaya bila api tu dah dah, dah dah padam dan hutan tu pun dah tak panas kan. Ha, jadi daripada abu yang dihasilkan daripada api itu dia menyuburkan tanah. Ya, dia meninggalkan tanah yang subur sebab ada sebab ada bekas api tu kan. Tetapi masalahnya ialah untuk dapat kesan tu, diorang kena bakar hutan lah. Right? So it is a very very dangerous thing to do. Jadi, and then uh, C ini maybe sebab kebanyakannya pun sebut tentang promoting solutions to limit slash and burn. Yeah? And then D, Jane Goodall's observations. Observation ni maksudnya pemerhatian on slash and burn. Ya. Yeah? Antara semua ini, tak ada satu pun disebut tentang slash 
uh, observation, pemerhatian tentang slash and burn. And so, number eight, the answer is C. Jadi, apabila kamu jumpa soalan yang bertanyakan dia punya main word ialah mainly, apa yang kamu perlu buat ialah bahagikan benda itu kepada bahagian-bahagian dan kemudian kamu tengok berapa bahagian yang paling banyak cerita tentang benda itu. <coughs> ya, yeah, and that will be the answer lah. Alright. Ada lagi ke soalan? No. Uh, oh, banyak nak kena baca ni. Kelas ada lagi 5 minit. <laughs> Okay, tak apa. Yang ini kita akan sambung minggu hadapan. Tetapi in the in the remaining five minutes, uh, first kali suka cikgu ingatkan student yang belum tulis nama dekat dalam income messages tu, tolong tulis ya. Uh, nama penuh dan nama sekolah dekat dalam income messages untuk dijadikan sebagai uh, kehadiran. And then, <coughs> so far student ada masalah tak untuk menjawab soalan-soalan macam ni? Not really. Oh, suara cikgu pun dah dah pecah lah. <coughs> yeah, so the key ya. Yeah, yeah, the key to answer this kind of question ya. Yeah, ialah apabila kamu apa baca dia punya soalan tu apabila baca kamu baca dia punya petikan dia, apabila kamu baca dia punya soalan dia ya, yeah, uh, pay close attention ya. Yeah. Contoh yang sangat bagus ialah ni lah kan. Ya, yeah, organizing your life with Marie Kondo. Ya, yeah. kamu perlu perasan bahawa these 10 tips from Marie create a practical shopping list. Ten tips itu ialah tentang shopping list. Dia bukannya tentang dia bukannya tentang organizing. Tak dikaitkan langsung dengan organizing sebenarnya. Walaupun tajuk itu ada terus ada tulis organizing. Walaupun sebelum itu dia tulis ya, famous organizing expert apa semua tu. Tetapi sebenarnya tak ada kaitan langsung. Ya, so be very careful apabila kamu uh, membaca lah. Dan sebenarnya benda ini bukan sahaja untuk uh, exam ya. Uh, sebenarnya semua pun macam itulah. Apabila kamu membaca, make sure that you understand fully ya, benda yang kamu baca itu. Alright, uh, bolehlah. Jadi sebelum cikgu tamatkan kelas, ada soalan ke? Any questions? Any comments? Huh? Ada ke nak 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 komen macam apa? My my SPM class uh, ada juga yang komen kan? <laughs> yeah, correct. Jadi uh, my advice to you is ya. Yeah, uh, kamu buat salah dekat dalam kelas-kelas macam ni, no problem. Ya, yeah, not a problem at all. Dia tak ada masalah langsung. Ya, yeah. kamu salah dalam kelas-kelas macam ni tak apa. Yeah, kalau kamu nak salah, biarlah kamu salah dalam kelas. Ya, yeah, daripada kamu salah dekat dalam SPM nanti ya. Yeah. Ha, jadi kalau kamu nak salah, buat salah dalam kelas. Supaya kamu boleh jawab dengan betul dalam dalam SPM nanti ya. Yeah. Alright. Jadi itu sahaja malam ini. Insya Allah kita jumpa lagi minggu hadapan. Ya, cikgu kita makan kelas dengan Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, sir. Alright. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Alright. Good night. Thank you, sir. Alright.